Rush Duel is a fast-paced spin-off game of Yu-Gi-Oh! where you can summon as many monsters as you want and draw up to 5 cards each turn. In this series, me and the Dr. Alex progress through each Rush Duel product release and build decks with whatever cards were available at that time. We have been drafting characters from the Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's anime and have exclusive access to those characters' boss monsters, and will continue to draft characters from the Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush series. Join us as we continue to battle it out in this series, Rush Duel Character Draft. The Overrush Pack 2 was released April 6th, 2023 and includes long-awaited support for rock monsters with a new archetype, Magnet Warriors. Alpha, Beta and Gamma the Magnet Warrior boost some incredible stats for non-legend level 4 monsters with two new records of 1700 attack and 1800 defense. They can be fused together to create Alpha the Magnet Cavalry, Valkyrion the Unity Warrior and Valkyrian the Magna Wings. They also receive two boss monsters in Protorion, the Magna Warrior, and Magnet Citadel Jar. Another new archetype makes its debut in this set, the Love Angels, which receive two boss monsters, All Love Goddess and Peace Love Angel. Aqua also gains some new support with Dianquito the Gourmet Maiden and Dianquito the Cleaning Maiden. I will also receive Dice Mate Girl Laps, Anna Magica Leader, and Seven's Road Charm Witch. Alex will gain access to the Cyburst Retrain archetype and the Space Yggdragos, including Space Yggdrago and Multi Space Yggdrago, as well as their fusion monsters, Dual Space Yggdrago and Deep Space Yggdrago. Finally, Alex will receive Transamu Power Rhinac and Super Graphagus Vapor Lancer. So this is the deck we're bringing to today's game. This is Aquas. So Aquas did get a couple of new cards, and one of them being the new boss monster, Dean Keto, the Cleaning Maiden. So this is probably the best new boss monster we got, and it's if your life points are lower than your opponent's life points, you can send one card from your hand to the graveyard, gain a thousand life points, then this card gains a thousand attack to the end of this turn. Now, gaining a thousand life points and gaining a thousand attack, very good effects. Discarding a card, not great, but then all the Dean Keepers do this basically, so it's like not the end of the world. The issue is if your life points are lower than your opponent's life points. Now, we're going to be gaining a lot of life points, which means a lot of the time we will have more life points, though it might be a little bit awkward to get this out. But I still think this is a lot better than the other one which we got, which is Dean Key to the Gourmet Maiden. So if a spell trap is on the field, send one card from your hand to the graveyard, gain a thousand life points. Then you can make this card gain attack equal to the number of face-up spell cards on the field times 300. Now face-up spell cards is going to be, for us, just the field spell. So if Alex has any equipped spells, we can maybe gain a little bit more. But basically this is going to cap out as just gain 300 attack, which again is still fine. It lets us clear 25s, which is pretty good. But I don't think either of them really compare to Cure Maiden, which just gains us cards. Not losing cards, instead drawing cards is really, really powerful. So I still think that's going to be the best. The other new card we got is the Mazeful Charity, which is if you have a face up Aquatype monster on your field and an Aquatype monster in your graveyard, we can draw two cards and place one card from your hand on the bottom of the deck. It's just a nice way to filter through and also putting cards on the bottom of the deck can be quite helpful in some weird ways. Like for example, sometimes we're not going to want to send a second copy of Rainy Megalopolis to the grave. We'd rather just tuck it to the bottom of the deck. So that's not too bad. All in all, I think this deck is fine. It's a little bit one dimensional. It doesn't have a ton of depth. It's just play some guys, gain some attack and draw some cards. But sometimes that's all you need and it can be consistent enough to get wins. So let's fire on in and see what Alex has got for us. Well, last week we had Dice versus Galaxy, which was uh, a bit of a weird one. I think a lot of that game came down to two factors, one of which was my dice were actually semi-competent this time, and two, you didn't do a whole lot of fusion summoning, which seems to be a theme at the moment, which is you, you keep playing fusion decks, but the fusions just aren't coming together, right? You need very specific pieces, you need the fusion spell, um, and it's not quite happening quite as often as we'd like, right? Mm -hmm. Now the question is, what deck are you going to bring this week? Because I've been saying Pyro for like the last three weeks. So I think you're probably going to be on that. Now again, you, you don't have to be. You can be on whatever you want. But Pyro is kind of a fusion deck, but also kind of a maximum deck. So there are options there, right? I don't know what you think I'm going to be on. No, not a clue, no. 
Hmm. He's definitely from that. You had no, right? Uh, I have got some boss monsters left over that I haven't used yet. Oh. I guess we'll just fire on in, then you can see what they are. Mm-hmm. Oh. All right, let's go with this. Hey, All right, let's go first. All right, I'm going to set, set, and then I'm going to summon out one of my new boss monsters. So I tribute to, and I summon out Dean Keto, the Gourmet Maiden. Ooh. So if a spell trap card is on the field, which there isn't, I can set a card from my hand to the graveyard to gain a thousand life points, and then this card can gain attack equal to the number of face up spell cards on the field times 300. So that's only going to be field spells and equip spells, because they're the only spell cards that can be face up. What I can do though is summon out Lady of Pumps, or sorry, Fashion of Faith as she's now known, boost that and draw a card. Then, probably just going to set this and pass the pen. That's heavenly gift. Okay, so we are on the the bird. First we'll try. It's a really strong turn one, just drawing five cards right off the bat. Yeah. We'll go Flame Ruler. Hey, you're not allowed to use Mazeful Charity, that's my card. <laughs> I have Aquas in this deck. <laughs> <laughs> right. The Salamander comes down. Salamander's kind of scary. He is. No cards are returning. Three. So I've got two monsters in graves. So you'll be able to weaken me by 200. Or is it 400? That's no, 200. Oh. 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 Oh, I think we have to be over there. Yeah, that's probably a smart choice. Alright, let's see what we get. Ooh. I think we always start with this. So I'm going to summon Sea Dragon Knight. Blast from the past. Mm -hmm. I'll activate its effect. I will put back probably both of these. And we'll take a look at what this is. Okay, so it's just a fusion. So now we can kind of go a bit more aggressive without having to worry as much. So I'm going to tribute two and summon out the Inkito the Cure Maiden. Then I can activate my Rainy Megalopolis, which will then turn on Cure Maiden's effect, which as long as I have a field spell face up on the field, I can draw a card and show it. If that card is a field spell, I gain a thousand life points. So let's take a look. Hey, would you look at that? It's Mazeful Charity. So I guess we'll go ahead and use this. No reason not to. So if we have an Acro Monster face up on our field and an Acro Type in our graveyard, we can draw two cards and place one card from my hand on the bottom of my deck. So the bottom of the deck is a bit of a weird one. It's obviously going to be one of these. I think it's probably just you. Then I'm going to set, set. Now the question is, am I going to bother using this? Kind of want to, but it's a little bit awkward. All right, I'm going to summon out another Sea Dragon Knight, who does get a reduction because of Rainy Megalopolis because it's not an Aqua. But I am going to use this effect just to put the other Sea Dragon Knight back in so I can just kind of keep this loop going. We'll put Split Slime back in as well. Just take another look at the old fusion and get a battle and we will attack into the salamander. Now most of your monsters if I recall have quite low defense except you've got like two that have pretty high defense. So yeah there's one of them. Splame. Okay so we are playing the fusion variant which does make sense because I think you do have a chromatographicus and graveyard. Oh well, no you don't. Mm -hmm. Did you have one and you shuffled it? That's what you did I think right? Yeah. Okay well I can't do anything else so I have my turn. Okay. Bolt. Oh. Melt. Activate fusion. Okay. Melt and bolt together. Just an aqua and a thunder. Make conduction warrior alchemicalizer Swirai. Send up to three cards from your hand to the graveyard, which is a bit awkward, including at least one monster. This card gains attack equal to the total levels of the monsters sent to the graveyard to meet the requirement times 100. So we've sent a level 10, so we gained 1,000 attack. Then if you've sent three monsters of different types to the grave, which you haven't, can't be destroyed. Okay. Could you please stop attacking my little girls? Okay, it's starting to become a thing. Right, well, that take nobody's scat thief. Oh, I don't really want any of these. So, do we just dump them all? Uh, this is a nice little thing I could do, but with this current board, it doesn't really work. So I think I am just going to send all three.
Okay. How do we wish to proceed? Probably start with this, right? This probably makes the most sense. Or I could just use that. I have reservations about putting Dean Keto back into my deck with Sea Dragon Knight. Just because there are cards I have to get out of the graveyard. So leaving it in there's not a bad idea. Alright, let's start with another Mazeful Charity. Let's take a look at what we get here. So you're potentially actually pretty good here. Ooh. I want to keep you. Probably keep you. I don't need you. I just put back in the bottom of the deck. Okay, that's perfect. All right, then we're going to activate our third Mazeful Charity. All right, I think I'm going to put this back. Then we're going to fire off the Sea Dragon Knight. And I'm going to put back this and this. Take a peek at what this is. This is when it puts level 8 or lower monster declares an attack while you have a face up level 7 or higher pyro monster. So that effect doesn't matter to me too much because of what I've got in my hand. Alright, we will just simply flip over Dark Hole. We're going to just wipe the board. Ooh. Then we're going to summon out Jamais Vu. We're going to activate Jamais Vu and then take our Dark Hole and Amazeful back to the deck. Take a cheeky draw. Then we will summon Splitter Slime. We're going to tribute to and summon out my Dean Keto the Cleaning Maiden. Then I'm going to summon out my Hyosube. Then we're going to set. And am I doing this is the question. The issue I have, right, is I know you have the maximum. And if you do just stumble into the maximum on the top next five cards of your deck, whether or not you have like draw spells or whatever to get you there, you can just pop two of my back row. So... I'm like, do I hold this for a better opportunity or do I just use it under the expectation that you can probably just pop it anyway? So I think I am just going to use this. So I'm going to use Moisturize. And I'm just going to pop your back row. So again, you can't use it right now. So part of me is like, I should hold it for when I actually need it. But at the same time, if you do just draw the out. Mm -hmm. So I'll get him for some damage and we'll pass. So I could have gained an extra thousand attack by discarding that moisturize as well, but uh, I don't know if it's worth it. Yeah, I think we do this. Okay. Attention to draw, draw two. two. That. Come on. What on earth does this thing do? Steam Swallow Gem ZZ. Okay. Your opponent has a monster on the field. Special summon one level two or lower fight attribute monster from your graveyard to your field or in face up defense position, then you can set a fusion from your graveyard. So the logic is, you use this, grab back the th thunder, I think it was, or a I can't remember what it was, and then fuse these off. I can't remember if this is actually used in the fusion, yeah, aqua and thunder. Okay, so that's where we're going with this. I don't really think I can interrupt you at this stage. So here comes a bolt. So we potentially mm. can use Bolt's effect as well. No, apparently not. Now, do you have a level 4 or lower monster in your hand? Yes. Uh, add, oh, Pyro or Aqua. Is the one you sent to the graveyard the, the non-Pyro Aqua one? Yeah, it's the Thunder one, <laughs> ironically. you got two Thunders uh, in the graveyard. Yeah. Right, I thought I had one of each. I don't like how you're getting a boost off my field spell as well. Uh, I'll go away in a minute. <laughs> Ah, all right, so you can discard cards. If you discard one monster, you would gain levels, you gain attack equal to the total levels of the monster. So you need to discard a level four to crash. Chances are you have at least one maximum piece. I think realistically, I'm not going to get a better opportunity than this. So I am going to use the compulsory evacuation device. Oh, God damn it. Oh. Oh, no monsters. Oh, so. Arguably, then, that wasn't even a good compost. How do I how do I kill you this turn? Is there a way? If your back row is absolutely nothing, I could get a maximum of 27 with what's on board. Alright, let's start with my hydration. And I'll pop one of your back row. Then I activate Magical Stone Excavation. And as weird as it is, we're discarding Mirror Force, uh, Mirror Force, uh, Dark Hole. 
We're going to grab back the hydration. We're going to activate the hydration. Pop this. Oh, I'm so happy I did it like that. All right, and then this should be weak enough that I can clear it. And then we can get into the game with cleaning yeah. maiden and shoulder foam. Oh, man, if I didn't, I was debating. I was going back and forth to whether or not I used that magical stone excavation to get back the uh, hydration again. And oh, I'm so happy I did if I got blown out by Mirror Force again. Mirror Force, uh, Magic Cylinder. Oh, all right, let's see what happens in game two. Okay, I will set, set, our tribute two to summon out Dean Keto the Cleaning Maiden. Then I set one card face down at us. Okay, graceful. Okay. Okay. For another discard draw. Just like last game, we've opened drawing five cards. Ooh. Okay, so you have a face up fire action monster in the field. You can shuffle a pyro, aqua, thunder from your graveyard into the deck, draw one card. Then, if you're monster in maximum mode, you can draw one additional card. Uh, okay. All right, chromatographicus comes down. Probably uh. died. Yeah, you kind of have to clear in case I get any kind of boost, which my deck's quite good at doing. Ugh, this hand stinks. So, I think I'm forced to discard my second Cleaning Maiden. Uh, oh. We definitely set these. I literally cannot use this as much as I would love to, because it requires you to have a monster. So, I guess we'll just get in for some damage where we can, right? So I'll summon out my Splitter Slime, whose effect is irrelevant because I need a very specific type of monster, that being a face-up monster with 1500 more attack. And then Shoulder Phone Yen Yen, who I also can't use the effect because you need to have a monster that I can reduce. So we'll just go straight <laughs> to battle. And we'll get in for 22. And then we'll pass. Oh. Alright, Bolt comes down. Repeat for Gen Z. Activation. Grab back bolt. Uh -oh. uh, brick phone Nian Nian doesn't do anything, but she has more attack and she is aqua. I suppose they're both aqua. What is this hand, Gabe? <laughs> um, okay. I think we only have one option, so I'm going to flip over my talismanic seal array. And we're going to chuck some cards back in. We're going to weaken this down to a lovely 400 attack. Then, I'm going to summon out my shoulder phone Nian Nian. Followed by activating my hydration to pop the back row. Okay, it was just a Mazeful Charity. Well, I like your Mazeful Charity so much, so I'll use my own. Oh. Uh, probably this. Okay, now I can place one card from my hand to put my deck and then grab back a aqua monster, which is what I'd really like to do. Question is, which one of these am I putting back? Probably just you. We'll weaken you. We'll grab back my cleaning maiden. <laughs> and we'll tribute both to summon out the cleaning maiden. And we'll summon out my fashion of faith. Activate Fashion of Faith. Boost up the attack. Oh, that's not what we want to draw. Hmm. I suppose it was always a 50-50, but this was... I say 50-50. The odds were in the other one's favour. Right, we'll do this. We'll go to Battle Phase. We can get in for the 29. This is a big heavy hit. And then we can clear this tiny little bolt and then pass the turn. Mm -hmm. And let's face it, you can't beat Dean Keto the Cleaning Maiden. Right. She literally is in like a maid's outfit. I don't know what about her makes her a cleaning maiden. She's got like a fan, which I guess could be like a duster. 
Yeah. I also don't like how the D and Ketos keep getting younger and younger. It's very weird. <laughs> Melt. Gen Z again. Your new favorite monster. Your deck must have so many high levels yeah, in it. Apparently. You've got. I mean, I don't know your ratios, right? But I just know that there is at least Chemicalized Salamandra, Chromatographicus, multiple Gen Z, the maximum pieces. And again, I'm playing a fusion deck and not doing the fusion. <laughs> yeah, that seems to be the way it always goes. Um. Right, we can summon out Lady of Pumps. Sorry, Fashion of Faith. Gotta remember the new names. We'll activate the effect. Then we'll flip over our Hydration, which by the way, we had three copies of this card in our hand earlier. And we were just like, what do I do with three copies of this card? Then, I mean, you don't do anything, but I guess we'll summon you out anyway. Look, it's Nubia the Wicked. Then we'll tribute to and summon <laughs> out Dean Keto the Gourmet Maiden. I can discard and gain some life points and gain zero attack, which is neat. And this one only works if my life points are lower, so neither of my maidens actually do anything right now. Uh, but I don't think it should matter because we can do this. Yeah, GG. Oh, oh terrible game. <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a shame. Uh, do you want to get a game three to see, hopefully, see if the deck does what it's meant to do? No, because I don't think it will. Okay. I mean, we... I didn't like need to complete rehaul. Yeah, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. It, I think it like I, we we've spoke about this deck before, which was the last time you brought it, which I think it actually did a, a lot better than it did this time. Um, but it's very difficult to balance like a maximum plus fusion stuff, especially when there's multiple different fusions. There's like so many different things going on, and that, that makes the deck really, really cool, really, really interesting. But it does make it a little bit blurred in like exactly what like to prioritize. But I still think it's a really cool deck. Um, obviously, your what were your new cards in there? You had the cause you, you you had the Chromatographicus Fusion last time you brought the deck. No, there's a new Super Graphics Fusion. Oh right, That's so it's it. literally a second one. Oh yeah, is this, oh that is, one. That the is it like an Archer or something, or is that the the last one? Uh no, it's a Lancer. Ah okay okay. I mean. For mine, my new cards are on the board right now, right? Dean Keto and Dean Keto, as well as, you know, Mazeful. So I guess we we both brought Mazeful Charity as our new cool new card. <laughs> Arguably the best card in my deck, to be honest, because I don't dislike these Maidens. I do think Gourmet Maiden is not great because you don't really have equip spells in Aqua yet. So you're not going to be gaining a ton of attack off this card. And Cleaning Maiden is good but again if you're playing aqua your life points shouldn't be lower than your opponents if the game plan's going well right each of our maidens gives us life our spell trap hate gives us life and we only get to gain that attack and gain the life points if our life points are lower which is like we say a little bit awkward but going up to 35 is still very very good um as for the rest of the deck it was all just pretty complimentary right there's not a ton of depth to aqua unfortunately but Let's hope that the gods smile upon you a little bit better next week and that you get to uh, pull off your combos. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, GG, buddy. GG.